Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I now call this regular workshop meeting of the council to order. Uh, you've been provided with a copy of the proposed agenda for tonight's meeting at your places, and um, I would uh, entertain a motion to adopt the agenda and also adopt uh, the minutes from the uh, September 20th, 2016 regular workshop and the consent items that are listed. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing not all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, that brings us to our workshop topic for the evening. Uh, here on Sturgeon City, uh, we had scheduled this council discussion for this workshop, and uh, we're going to start by looking at these different options. There were six options that were provided to us at the last meeting, and uh, we're going to go through these real quick. Uh, so if we can scroll those. You can read these. This is option one. <coughs> Is that too fast? Hopefully you had an opportunity to see all six of those options, and now we're opening it up to the council for discussion. Uh, uh, anybody want to start? Yeah, one, one question on the classroom option and its relation to the TDA funding. If the classrooms and the program surrounding it were made available to other school systems throughout the state and even out, out of the state, two-day seminars or something, would that can would that make it eligible for continuation of TDA funding? <clears throat> well, so I think that piece is an important piece because, as most of you know, I chair the, the TDA, and we um, voted to support this project initially at the set amount that, that we have talked about before. And I think part of that vision was that we voted on the overall vision of what Sturgeon City was and what it was going to be in the future. If you, if you all recall that uh, the Sturgeon City Education Center uh, with the Institute would continue to grow and there's uh, students that would come from other areas of our state to come through our center and we would have aquatics as part of that you know, we were supposed to have some tanks down there, and that, that was uh, part of the overall strategic plan of, of Sturgeon City. And therefore, that allowed us to be able to put some funding towards that project. If what you're saying is that uh, if, if there's a new plan to keep it as just strictly uh, classrooms that would facilitate um, environmental education at, at a local level, um, that would definitely change uh, our our views on how we could support that because we are we're regulated in terms of how we can spend our funding two thirds one third uh, uh, for promotion and and capital projects but it's all centered around uh, heads on beds and bringing people to our community that would facilitate people getting gas, people eating at restaurants, and potentially staying overnight. 
Okay. Well, don't and let me interrupt you, but you're saying that option for just classrooms doesn't fit that. I'm criteria. not saying that it does. I'm just clarifying that if that were to be the case, then we would have to, to certainly revisit. revisit that scenario mm -hmm. as to from a strategic plan how that would facil facilitate our needs from a TDA perspective, and would that still fit our criteria in order to be able to offer that funding? Because you know we're we're always under the microscope at the state level whether we're spending our funds appropriately and and you know are we bringing uh, new visitors to our area and are they spending money locally are they staying in our hotels are they funding the basic replenishment of tax of which we're using to support some of these projects that that we're utilizing can we put that option back on the screen a minute <clears throat> Ron, could you have Glenn? Well, okay. Here. <laughs> if you recall initially, there, and, and Richard, you may need to help us with this, but the original strategic plan had um, tanks that were going to be part of this uh, facility. It was gonna, you know, I, I'm not going to call them fish tanks, but obviously aquatics that uh, would be part of a of a whole strategic plan to bring people into our uh, community and have them come down there as part of a, a tour. Is that still part of the plan? First of all, let me clarify for the audience. Uh, the reason why I'm not sitting at the table this evening is because we set the workshop up for y'all to have a discussion we're leaving these chairs so that if you have questions for the Surgeon City Board or for staff, we will come up. But that way it's your discussion. Uh, the question, uh, there has never been a finalization of what we're going to do with all of the various, what I'll call, tanks and components. If you have been to Surgeon City in the last month, you know that we have taken the necessary steps to take the two large clarifiers and now turn them into educational facilities. One actually has floating plants, and the water is now in the cylinders or in the clarifiers, and there is a waterfall that's been created for both. In the second clarifier, we have created uh, an oyster reef and a floating habitat, so you can actually see how the river and portions of Wilson Bay would work. There, so the answer is yes, some of the facilities are going to be converted over time, whether you build a building or not. We need to move forward with inexpensive improvements. I will tell you, to put those two clarifiers back in operation was very little money. And instead of having two large holes in the ground that just had dirt and rocks, now to have something in them that's positive. The nice thing about it is that at any time you decide that you want to do something else with the clarifiers, all you have to do is pull the plugs, take the fish out of there, pull the, uh, the plants out, and change the waterfall, and you can use it for something else. We were looking for an intermediate use. Intermediate may be a year, may be 20 years, but it's better than just having. So the answer to your question is yes, some of those components need to be turned into educational components. Thank you. So I guess, Jerry, my, from, from where I sit on the TDA, it is very, very important that we can quantify our expenditures with Sturgeon City and that the strategic plan is part of a whole plan that will bring people from outside our community into our community and spend money locally. Now, we can't guarantee they'll spend money locally, but obviously if someone's coming in from out of town, they're going to buy gas, they're going to eat some food, and maybe they're going to stay uh, a night or two, maybe yeah. not. <clears throat> But we have we we are very specific about that. So if there's any rearrangement of that vision, then we will have to, you know, have a different conversation. What, what's going on as far as marketing, as far as that being a destination? Has there been any effort put into that? I know you have a certain amount of money that's allowable for advertising for for well, this purpose. We well from from mm -hmm. our committee, you know. <coughs> I guess we've been in existence now for I think we 45 meetings, or about five or six years, and we we are uh, 
we're at the point where we're feeling very productive. You know, we've come a long way and we've had a lot of growing pains, but we're getting really organized in, in what we do and how we do it and working with our county counterparts, uh, the county tourism office and, and RTDA now works hand in hand with the sports commission. So um, there's no duplication of efforts. And if there are duplication of efforts, they're there for a reason for a particular event or you know, particular situation that we're both trying to double up on. But a lot of the events that have taken place uh, to bring people in into Jacksonville have come from those strategic efforts. But to answer your question about Sturgeon City directly, I don't think that, that TDA is spending any marketing dollars specifically for Sturgeon City. I mean, that's, that should be a thought that if eventually you're going to extend this outside of this region to people. If, if that's what you want to do is draw people to Jacksonville, to, to Sturgeon City. Exactly. <clears throat> Bob? I'm not necessarily in favor of, of an event center. We have a, we, we made a commitment as a council whether we individually voted for or against certain items of the commitment, but we, we as a council have made a commitment to Sturgeon City. Um, I'd like to honor that commitment, but I can't, in my mind, fully support a, an event center. One, I don't particularly think it's the best location. Uh, number two, I, I don't know that I mean, a performer is, is an estimate, a guess is really a guesstimate, and I know the performer shows some favorable um, happenings down there through the event side, but I'm, again, I, until you really open it and start advertising and start spending a couple of years going down the road, you don't really know what's going to happen with it. The original mission of Sturgeon City it was... <coughs> to educate our children, help educate them. And I think, in my mind, uh, the event center <clears throat> takes away that focus. Uh, I, I heard the presentation last last month, and and classroom space was really, to me, almost an afterthought. I, I, I don't say that it is in their minds, but the way it was presented, it emphasized the event side much more so to me than, than the classroom side. Um, the event center has a has a higher price tag, and and as such, it has more risk, and it's got risk not only for the city for future for future funding, <coughs> but it also has risk to the Sturgeon City Board. Um, you know, they're the, they're taking on the the risk of of of. Will the, will the funding take care of the operating expenses? Um, you know, what little bit I know about event centers, I know that most of them struggle to make money. Um, all of them require, at least most of them in, in the local area, requires some assistance if it's a municipal facility, requires some assistance from the taxpayers. I'm not saying that this might, but um, that it's in the back of my mind, and I, I don't know that I'm. You know, I've said this before. I'm not necessarily a vision person. Um, I'm a nuts to bolts, day to day kind of guy. Um, I have trouble seeing sometimes what something can be. You know, I might have voted against uh, open up the commons. Who knows? I might have. But look at what the commons done today. So, but I, I just don't. In my gut, in my heart, I have trouble feeling good about the concept that we're currently being asked to look at. I think it has has potential, but it also has more risks. Uh, I'd rather fall back to a position of, of let's provide the, the classroom space. We we have an obligation to, to the Sturgeon City Board. We, we, we voiced that in the past. And I'd like to see us go back to a, a classroom situation. Uh, less risk, and I think it really addresses the 
the, the needs of Sturgeon City much more so to me than an, an event center. I just I just don't know that uh, that. That I think the Sturgeon City folks want to necessarily need to be in in the the catering and and events venue. You know, they're there to um, provide guidance and direction. I think for the educational function. So long-winded, but um, that's my my thoughts right now. And, and, and you know, and, and what. For me, what you're saying is, is on point because a couple things. The, the, the civic center verbiage that was used last time or, or conference center verbiage that was used, I, I just don't know where that ar arose from because in my mind I always thought that we were funding a building to expand Sturgeon City and its mission as an education center for classrooms and a building that, you know, could be used if someone needed to have some meeting space and, and they had it available. But I never thought that that was its primary use. So I'm a little bit off base with our last meeting or two. And the other thing that really gets me is I've got a 10,000 square foot building and I can't imagine it being any of those that we just talked about. I mean, it's a, it's a good-sized building, but, I mean, you put two, three, four classrooms in there, you're not going to have a whole lot of space left. Um, so I'm not sure about this event center, and, and unless I'm off base here, I, that's not much of a big build. I mean, it's a big building, but it's not huge by any stretch of the imagination. And that's why I'm having a difficult part or time with the cost exceeding the budgeted amount. So not being long-winded, I, I, I tend to, to go back to what we originally supported. It was an expansion of an educational center um, at Sturgeon City because they were bursting at the seams, needed more space, had more kids coming through the programs, didn't have enough room, needed more classroom space, and that this space could facilitate. And I think, Richard, you, you had mentioned it way back then that why not have a facility that if you could use it for uh, for a larger meeting uh, that could be utilized as that, but not as its primary purpose. So if it can't support itself on that educational piece and, and the mission of which Sturgeon City is, I'm like you. I'm not sure that you could rent it 40 times a year for $2,000 a day. Uh, if that's what the board is banking on. I'm not sure that they can do that. But I am sure, and I would still support the educational portion of that operation because I think that's huge. And I think that there's a, a still quite a bit more opportunity, opportunity to increase that education through partnering with the school system, STEM, and, and other educational opportunities that could be down there. UNCW. Yeah, UNCW. And, that, and the original intent was to bring others down to look at Sturgeon City, to see what we've done, to see the education that we provide down there. And that's where those tourism dollars, you know, would, would be tied in. So I, I'm a believer of supporting exactly what we supported to start with. Are we talk of roughly in the same terms an education center and yes. a classroom space? That that's where that's where my thoughts are. And honestly, a ten thousand square foot building, that's all you're really gonna get. You're not getting no conference center uh, unless I'm off base. I have a ten thousand square foot building at my office and I can't imagine you holding any kind of major activity there. And have two or three classrooms. It's just not big enough. So having said that, in my mind, there's no reason that we can't build a 12,000 square foot attractive building for the $4 million that we have budgeted for. I mean, that's $450 a square foot. We built the public safety building at 200 and some dollars a square foot. And when I asked the question last time, James Sawyer even admitted that he thought that the estimate was rather high. 
and I've talked to other people that are in the business. Bob, I even called you, and we had a long conversation about the construction cost and that, you know. And I asked the question. It was some movable walls and some... Uh, also volume. Yeah. You know, you, you were building a lot of volume for the square, fit, yeah. square footage of floor space. So, you know, <clears throat> well, yes, to answer your question, I'm still where I was at our initial vote to vote. Well, I'm kind of... Uh, in line, my thoughts are in line with what I've heard expressed from you and and Bob. Um, if a conference center, event center, could clear up doubts in my mind about future funding and that it wouldn't be a long-term economic drain on the city in terms of subsidies, uh, I might look differently. But I, I can't comfort myself that it would be. But I am for the the education center with classroom space, but to me that's a fulfillment of what the council intended when we first explored the idea. Well actually we didn't voluntarily explore the state forced us to look for ways of treating our sewage instead of dumping it into Wilson Bay and we considered a new plant there ocean outfall in land application and council made I think a tough decision it was more expensive at that time we embarked on the largest capital improvement project at that time in the city's history to build a land application and along with it and most importantly the council made a moral commitment that it was going to clean up Wilson Bay which building a new plant on that site would have so the idea of cleaning up Wilson Bay was the uh, was a key element <coughs> of our environmental efforts, and along with it came the effort of Sturgeon City. And I'd, I'd like to see that impetus, impetus continue with what, what, what I would envision would be a education center with classroom space and an ability to run programs that would not only be benefit to our youth and so many of whom have gone through that program so far, but make it broad enough and attractive enough to attract kids from all over the state and neighboring states. That's that's where my sentiments lie. Well, I know the intent. Uh, I think the original intent. Uh, I can't really speak for a certain city board, but. I think your primary purpose was to have the classrooms and to have a place for learning and that the event center would be secondary if I, if I understood this right. Uh, I still think that, in my opinion, I think that I think the uh, architect still has some work to do to bring this thing down as far as the price is concerned. I, you could take you could take the classrooms. you don't have to have an elaborate building down there, I don't think I mean. You want something nice, but you could actually work that space, uh, you know, where you could where you could open up those classrooms to make an open space. I don't see how you, how you couldn't do that, you know, if you had like room for if you're talking about uh, room for three or four classrooms, how how that couldn't work, uh, where you would have an open space in the event in case you did want to hold some type of event, you know, uh, there, but. After after hearing some of the things the architect was talking about when he was here last, it seemed like there was a lot of exorbitant uh, things there. I mean, the space. I mean, it, it didn't sound as though the space was being efficiently uh, used either. I mean, I, I might be saying this wrong, but especially like talking about the ceiling and all that kind of stuff. It's just uh, it was just a little bit more than what I thought we were going to do. Mr. Willingham. Um, I'd like to thank the Sturgeon City Board for um, its presentation, and I'd like to thank Dr. Woodruff for, for his very candid presentation. Uh, and I'm going to start out talking like Dr. Woodruff because I think right now Clemson is undefeated, <laughs> and barely after last Saturday <laughs> with Louisville. <clears throat> but it's very hard to go undefeated, um, have a perfect season. 
back to the board of Sturgeon City, um, they have batted a thousand as far as I'm concerned with the expectations on what we started out with. Um, I remember um, the trash dump, dump trash there. I know how bad um, the river was, of course. Um, the return that we have gotten from Sturgeon City has been delivered in spades. Far exceeded um, my dream, vision, expectation. And I, I think that can be said of our downtown initiatives, all of them, housing, um, Riverwalk crossing. So we, you know, do the best we can with speculating about the future, but um, we also have the performance of um, citizens who volunteered in that effort of helping us um, focus on that brownfield, and they've done an outstanding job. And uh, sometimes uh, government comes with that um, incentive, that uh, additional resource, and um, gives um, that push. I think this is one of those times. We've been discussing this and um, uh, talking earnestly about our um, um, views and positions. And I thought um, uh, Mayor Pro Tem was saying one thing and um, Mr. Warden something different. So it's easier for me to discuss it in terms of the options uh, that we've been given. And I'm supportive of option one. Um, one of the concerns was uh, Onslow Inn, what are we going to do with it? Whether that would be some competition for um, a facility that we talked about in option one. Well, we've been talking about Onslow Inn um, uh, for a long period of time, and we haven't, uh, we're, we're, we're not even close right now to some development. In the event that Onslow Inn would be developed, I would hope that if we had an existing uh, facility like we've talked about in option one, that it would complement that and be designed in a way that it would complement it. Another thing that was discussed was the preference for big banquets, um, and the base was referenced, to be in a hotel conference setting so that you don't have um, drinking and driving. Um, of course, Surgeon City wouldn't offer that, but at, I think we're at a stage, even in the conferences that we go to, where shuttles um, uh, handle that concern, and I'm pretty sure that um, the base would look in that direction, too, when they had uh, events. Um, I don't see the conflict when we talk about um, educational classroom site and event center. There, and, and I think some of the things that Mayor Pro Tem uh, stated support that. Uh, there's no conflict in having a facility of the size of option one and your classrooms. We're talking about alternative uses. We're talking about a utilitarian kind of concept where that space is utilized for um, combining the spaces so you can have an event. There was discussion about the high school not being off the table um, and partnering uh, with them. Well, why wouldn't you want something that could accommodate that kind of need and, and space? So um, I'm really against repaying the $900,000 as an option. I'm really against an option that um, doesn't include um, tourism funding support. So um, sure, we had some estimates that exceeded what we wanted to see. I think the discussion from Mr. Sawyer, Mayor Pro Tem, gives me hope that the price will come down. 
I think that the um, architect did a good job and um, conveyed to us the um, options that were designed to accommodate um, the ceiling change. That was a savings of money uh, for that. The options that were designed to, um, so that the, the, the walls didn't retract into the ceiling. Um, ways of saving. <coughs> I am not that, um, well, I'm, I'm a little optimistic that there's more room there in, in savings, and I think that the architect uh, suggested that there were things that could be done to do that. So um, I think that we should stay the course. Um, a lot of the expense, as I understand it, was because of the brownfield aspect of this and the landscaping concerns. But that's what we wanted. We wanted something that um, took a trash dump and brought it into this kind of utilization. And, uh, you know, uh, Kerr Street Recreation Center was a trash dump. At one point, parts of it were the baseball field it is. And, but we, um, we clean that up with green space, if you will, a field, grass. Uh, I think it's just spectacular what we envisioned with Sturgeon City going from what it was to, to where it is. I, I understand that there's some funding sources that may be um, possibilities. Um, we've done pretty well in, in that area. Um, EPA, I, I showed um, Mr. Carter some information at the last meeting about um, funding, and I'm, I'm, I, know, I, don't, I know it's not easy, from um, EPA's Brown Film Program. So I'm thankful for what has been done. I think we all agree that we have a wonderful river now, <coughs> and um, that expectations have been exceeded. And I just think that option one gives us the opportunity to uh, stay the course and I respect and understand and can see the points that everybody's making. Thank you. So, Mr. Willingham, you favor this option one up here? Yes. I think the big question probably on everybody to find is where, where would that $1 million over budget be made up? Te technically, it wasn't. At the last meeting, it was really only 459,000. Yeah, 459,000. Yeah, 459, and, and up to now. But, uh, oh, go ahead. Okay, I was going to go ahead and give my tirade. <laughs> I want to say need first water? off that need some water. Need some water, definitely. <laughs> Might get too much. You know, I I, I want to tell you first off, I love the environment more than anybody. I think I spend more time out there as I can than any the rest of you. I appreciate what has happened down there as far as the Sturgeon City Institutes. Uh, I'm really thankful for the efforts that they have made that accelerated the restoration of the new river. I don't think they can lay claim to the entire process because nature has a way of, of reclaiming what we leave alone, if we'll leave it alone. All three of my children attended the Sturgeon City Institutes. So I'm familiar with the programs. Uh, you know, my concern, multifaceted as it is, um, with the most previous presentation, we heard from the esteemed bankers, their pro formas. I, I appreciate that. Uh, I've got a, I've got an old pro forma, got a little dirty here over the past four years, but that we were presented with four years ago. I'm not going to ask how that's worked out. I remember as a young businessman, I went to a banker with a pro forma. He was uninterested. He wanted to know what I had today. How was I going to make those payments I was asking for? He didn't care what I was, thought I was going to do with the money. He wanted to make sure I had the money to go. The last presentation, like you said, I think was severely optimistic. 
Well, here, heard the convention center. Okay. Who's, who's run a convention center here in this building? Right? I went home, my wife said, well, that was nice. They told about everybody else's prices. But when she, as a Hallmark representative, would go to book a convention center, the first thing she said was, well, we're going to do all this in catering. How much are you going to knock off? Mr. Woodruff referenced the lodging aspect. So you, you, you need a three-legged stool to make something like that work. You need the, the space, the catering and beverage, and the lodging. You've only got one stool. Again, I heard the proposals. It was going to be convention center, educational institutes. That, these are generators, money generators. A daycare, after school daycare. Um, I mean, there's a lot of businesses there that were referenced without experience. And I think experience counts, matters. I think that's one of the reasons we're here talking about a $5 million project when it started as a $4 million project. Obviously, there's some miscommunication along the way. Mostly, I'm concerned that we are at the end of the line, we being the city of Jacksonville, taxpayers. That they've got a commitment, TDA's got a commitment, and we've got everything else. And, you know, we can get a projection, but if it doesn't work out and the light bill's got to be paid, the insurance has got to be taken care of, maintenance has got to be done, who's picking up the shortfall? <clears throat> Obviously, we've been told we are. We were the last ones to the table, but now we're sitting alone with the checkbook laying open on the table. I appreciate and I think a lot of, most of the, all the people in the Sturgeon City Board, what they do. But being able to transform from an agency that has derived 70, 80, 90 percent of its income from governmental entities, grants, maybe, maybe 20 percent comes from donations and revenue generating and they're going to convert into a revenue generating non-dependent on funding i want to see some somebody that's done it before or an example of it like i said most like you said most of the examples we see in existence are subsidized to a large degree by the municipality or something like TDA. It, it, it really bothers me to think that the $250,000, $300,000 spent with this architect could go for naught. But it pains me a lot more to think that we could be left in a position where year after year after year our taxpayers are paying, subsidizing two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars cost overruns. You say they've exceeded expectations. I'm concerned with utilization. It's still what four thousand so kids a year. I mean we got twenty five thousand students in the county. It's not like it's not like everybody gets to use Sturgeon City. It is exclusive to a great degree. If you're not on a field trip, if you don't do one of the weekly institutes, you're not participating. You're not benefiting. I was not in favor of it as a $4 million project. I'm certainly not in favor of it as a $5 million project. The well, only thing that's happened since we approved it is the estimates have risen, risen, and risen. Now you think you can scale them back? That's, that's hope, opium. <laughs> you can hope that it happens. But if it doesn't, you know for a fact who's picking up the tab. And it's our taxpayers.
decision time. I haven't heard from Ms. Washington. Any other comments? Well, we heard some interesting <coughs> comments made here. All of them are valid. Yeah, and I mean, Randy uh, makes a lot of very good points um, at its surface. You know, if you don't have a solid strategic plan that focuses on what you're good at and not base it on something that you don't know about, uh, which that, that bothered me a little bit. You know, the, the numbers uh, being attached to something that isn't part of what they're doing now. And I will say that, you know, uh, focusing on, you know, 40 meetings a year at 2,000 apiece or, you know, or a Marine Corps ball or something like that, I was a bit bothered by that because I think that's, that's off base. You're not going to do that. I mean, it, it, number one, the building's not big enough. If you've got two or three classrooms, there's no way that you're going to hold a large-scale facility event there. But its successes are... They're there. They've been there for years. And, you know, Sturgeon City and its institutes are second to none. The work that they've done out there is in incredible. Uh, the opportunities that lie there, I think, are, are huge. I don't think that they've tapped into everything that's available to them. Uh, so, and that's where my vision lies. My vision lies on what it was intended to do, and that's be an environmental education center. And, and to focus on what their strengths have been for all these years. I mean, how many kids have gone through that institute, like your three kids and so many others that have gone on and come back to say that those institutes have had an impact in their lives? You know, that's significant. Can you put a dollar amount on that? Probably not. But as a municipal government that we're involved in, in our citizens' lives and people's lives, I think you can attest that you, you've done something good with that. And I think if we get back to the basics on that vision, then I have no problem supporting that project as option one, not at, not at $5 million, because I still in my heart believe that that project can go at the amount that was budgeted for that project. Um, I just, um, I am not convinced that a 12,000 square foot building can cost $5 million. I just, I can't, I can't go there. Um, so. In my mind, I think that I will certainly support option one at its current state of support. Well, we, you know, hearing everything again, we did make a commitment of $1 million. And, and to, to tie in on that, Mayor, not to cut you off, everybody has held to their commitment. Right. They've come up with their portion, we've come up with our portion, so there's been no fault at to this point in time, other than the environmental piece that we've been working. Yeah, but where, where I'm going is what happens here, okay, we we have our $1 million commitment from the city. Sturgeon City has committed to contribute $1 million towards this building. The TDA is, is probably not going to meet their requirements at this point if we go to the classroom side. What, what happens even then if the building, uh, if there's problems, if there's more money that's needed, where it comes in over cost again, where is that money going to come from? Well, I, I mean, I believe that as an education center, the way it was presented initially, it would meet the TDA's requirement. Would? It would if that strategic plan plays out. And, John, <laughs> you're my friend here, so help me out and keep me legal. I'm, I'm everybody's friend. <laughs> um, but at its original state, it would, it would, yes. it would satisfy... Our funding mechanism. The TDA presently, as you know, is paying, I think, ninety, ninety-five thousand out of the two-thirds money for promotion. And that is just a check written to Sturgeon City. The seventy-five thousand was coming out of the one-thirds money. But again, uh, I, I agree with you that it'll be up to the TDA board. But that I think that it can be, that can be crafted in such a way that the mission could, as many of other things, uh, could be supported as far as putting uh, heads on beds. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, through and education, that's, that's, and that's, that's what its original right intent was. And I'll just say one other thing, Mayor. If you, if you remember, the TDA has taken on that expenditure that used to come out of the general budget, fund budget for years and years and years to support of Sturgeon City. So we've taken that on Absolutely. Uh, six years ago, I guess now, so to the tune of almost $700,000 in, in that period of time of funding. 
that hasn't come out of the general fund. So, you know, we support the project, but I think it's important for the board to know that, you know, that well, strategic plan has to has to stay intact. Yeah, <clears throat> that's true. But the, the, when it, we're going back and looking at this, though, like I said, we made a commitment. All right, who's to say somebody won't honor their commitment? You know, or can't want to their commitment. Yeah. It goes back to Randy there. Exactly. Who's going to pick that tab up? We know who's going to pick that tab up. I mean, what are you going to do? Let the building go once it's built? Can't do it? Kind of like a little quagmire, isn't it? I know that when I talked with one of the members of the Sturgeon City Board, not to be named, but anyway, it was put forward that one of the reasons for the uh, event center uh, was to be able to raise revenue to pay towards this debt, this commitment. What if, what if, like you say, you know, the events aren't there? Who's going to who's going to provide the cushion when the check can't be written? I mean, we, we need to know that before we start committing our citizens' taxpayers, our taxpayers' dollars. To I don't it. think we can delay the decision on this. We've no. been working on it for. No, I'm not saying delay months it. Months and months and months and That's months. That's a good question. I'm not saying delay it, but I mean. If we approve it, we got to we got to go into understanding that it may come back to us to have to. I understand that. I understood that all the time. That was one of my concerns. I move for adoption of option one. I have a motion. Part of the problem I have with any of the options is that the devils are in the details. And, you know, on one hand, I, I, I hate the thought that we would throw out a design that we spent a couple hundred thousand dollars on. I hate the thought that, I'd have to, that, we, that we would have to pay the, the uh, TDA back if we change it too severely to where they, they couldn't support it. Um, but the current design as it sits, you know, is it was, it's like it was designed for the event center first and the classrooms are an afterthought. And I, and, and I'll go back to what I said earlier. I, the, the, the presentation last time was, was pushed from the event side and not the classroom side, the, the education side. And that, that really bothers me. I hope the board hasn't lost focus. I don't think they have. I think they were trying to make it, uh, try to make it a little more palatable to us. But um, you know, I, I voted against the uh, the bond issue for it. Um, but again, I, I'll go back to my comments. I will support what the council has done, and they made a commitment. But I just have a an issue with a. Four million dollars for that amount of square footage. I don't know whether we have the right architect. <coughs> you know, did we? Is that was that the right decision? I mean, I I don't have anything against Mr. Sawyer. I think he's a fine architect. I just I just don't know what's happened. What? How did it? How did it? In my mind, how did it spiral out of control? I know I know time had certainly something to do with that. That's no question about that. That's nobody's fault. Let me ask you a question, being a construction guy. I don't mean to break your chain of train of thought here, but well, it, was, it was about done. Yeah, you were about, about done. Right you, you were about done anyway. Out the yeah. uh, <laughs> you're a construction man. Let me ask you this: yeah. uh, the price per square foot. What do you? What did that come out to? What we were looking at there before yeah. was was somewhere around four hundred and some dollars. Is that unusually high? Yeah. You can build a uh, you can build a classroom classroom schools for 175 to 200 dollars a square foot, and you can make them to where they open up. I'm not against you know I, I think you're I think we all share some of this uh, uncertainty. I also said some of the de devils in the details here, but you know if we if we build a classroom and we put permanent walls in, then certainly I think. I think we probably have a hard sell to TDA. 
a lot I think of it's harder for them to, to maybe to buy into it. A lot of the places I've been to, you know, where they've had dividers, you know, so in some of these hotel grand ballrooms where they split right. up in groups, right. they have those drag out right. soundproof well, curtains. And you have, you uh, know, you have you have ones that you can pull. You've got some that are that that you can operate, you know, electric electrically that come out of the wall. It takes up a little bit of space. I know why, partly why he went overhead to, so that it allowed more space. And also, if you have an event center, you typically like higher higher ceilings. You like volume. Well, volume, you know, I, I go back to the cost. Part of what's, what you, people tend to think, how much it costs per square foot. Well, that's not always accurate because you're really building volume. And there's a lot of volume for this square foot, and that's what was helped driving the cost up in my mind. So. Yeah, I agree. There is a motion. There is a motion on the floor. It has not received a second. The motion dies on the lack of a second. Would it? Further discussion. I'll, th I'll throw out a motion. I'll, I'll take a chance that I, mine won't be. Um, I'm going to go option five, and I know there's a lot of details to be worked out um, on that, and, and but I'd like to put the emphasis back on the classroom side. And that's the only reason why I'm really supporting option five, not necessarily the, the dollar value or so, although that's important to me, but very important, actually. Let me see option five. asking the question. I would like to. Um, um, I don't know if it's appropriate. Well, Can I see his, the, motion, his motion, we, we have Yeah, well, I've done a motion out. It has to, somebody's got to support it. It dies. Would Can you I read the cons? Yeah. <clears throat> the option five. Please wait for Next the lines. Lines. Next screen. There you go. There you go. So I don't know that I necessarily agree with that con that it doesn't meet the TDA funding. I think again, some of the details could be that you could yeah, I mean, I you agree. could have movable walls of some sort, stackable walls. I don't care what you call them. But but if your motion includes that along with the idea of the quote the education center. Well, that's kind of what I was you know I guess when I was discussing I said that you know none of the options really address what I'm particularly want, but, uh, you know, I, I definitely think that we need to build, if we have, we, have commit, we need to build a, we need to build a, uh, we need to honor commitment, we need, but we also have a commitment to our citizens that we will provide uh, monies well spent, and I just can't support a four million dollar project, but I can well, support. Well, aside from that, I think this would satisfy the, uh, one of the purposes of TDA provide assistance for these kind of projects that will help economic growth and community I, economics. I want, to, I want to keep the TDA funding if we so can. So do I. That's so, what you know, I'm I don't, you know, if That's we, why I want your motion to include that. Well, so, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Right. I'll, I'll so include I'll second that. All right, before we go into discussion on that, we have a motion and a second. Uh, I know we were going to limit this to council discussion, but I would like to ask the chairman, <coughs> if you would take the table, please. Dr. Don. Uh, we want to make some points of clarification. And I know you, you speak on behalf of the board, so you want to? I would just, I asked the mayor if it would be possible to hear you say a few words on making sure that what we're discussing here today in terms of the education center is still your primary objective. Or are, there, or are we in left field? Are we talking about something that is not the wishes of your board? No, sir. Our we need to be on the same sheet of sir, music. If, I, if an I, environmental education center is not your primary strategic plan for that facility, then we probably need to know now. No, sir. The environmental education center has been at the very forefront of what we want to look at and add to at Sturgeon, at Sturgeon City. Uh, the opportunity to bring young people there or other groups there for training and education purposes. The opportunity to tell the story of how we, that conversion of that brownfield area, uh, the story of, of the uh, economic, uh, economical cleanup there, the ecological cleanup there, all the efforts there, uh, that story needs to be told, needs to be celebrated. Uh, educa uh, environmental stewardship, that's been the onset of, from the very first Sturgeon City Institute in 1999 to where we function now and all the thousands of young people that's come through that. Um, the journey to where we are tonight has 
has taken us through uh, two architects, several plans, several replans. So unfortunate um, review of the environmental situation there. And we recognize in the end, and uh, something I hear very much tonight and very much support of our board there, is that we take this initial effort, this initial $4 million bond, and we try to find something that's capacity that best serves this focus, this edu environmental education focus there. And um, we too have been a passenger on this journey. Um, it takes a group team effort to get to this point here uh, and watching the design components, uh, trying to understand and, and clarify and re-clarify what we're getting, what we're showing, what we're demonstrating. As we've talked to our in groups, investors, uh, people like Charles Eford, who chairs our capital development committee, has, has made the effort to bring people down and, and talk about this. But trying, as we are all around the table tonight, and those decision makers which will make the final decision, to define the best capacity to, to do this and still meet the original intents of what we started from, an environmental education center, to bring young people down, to bring others down, to, to train, to educate, uh, to use a untold resources there out the back of Sturgeon City with the Wilson Bay there, all that space and all to make the very best use of it. That is our continued our intent and our original intent. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Said it much more eloquently. Yes, he, he, he is very point. eloquent. That's um, my point. Can you read back the motion? Do you have it written down? Um, I have the Councilman Warden uh, made a motion to approve option five with the details to be worked out, but with uh, includes uh, for the TDA, to, uh, it includes the um, requirement, the commitment of the TDA funding. And Would I, you consider? removing the, the dollar cap so that they have flexibility to be able to design appropriate what, space. What, what dollar cap are you talking about? <clears throat> Go back. Okay, back. Yeah, I, that's what I've said. I, I, uh, it's, it's, it's somewhat confining, but I, but I look at those, those as really um, suppositions and a proposal of what could so be. You're not saying. No, I'm, I'm not necessarily like saying that. that it needs to be 1.22 million or so. I just to um, could I'd like to add that uh, that that this motion will also include besides TDA commitment hopefully will also include Sturgeon City uh, board commitment too. You, accept you okay with that? Yes Jerry? I am fully in accord with it. Yeah, the details to be worked out later. I mean there's there's a lot of details. What is it what exactly square footage do they you know w will best suit and, and and so forth but I I definitely don't want to I don't want to see us bumping up against that $4 million number. I think that's way out of line. But there's still whatever their design is going to be. It's going to have to be something that's yeah, uh, we acceptable by the TDA to be able to maintain their funding. And Sturgis. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, it, it, has to, it has going to have to meet all three groups' needs. Ours, the taxpayers. We represent the taxpayers. The taxpayers, the, the, the Sturgeon City Board, and TDA. So this will require a somewhat redesign. It has to. I don't see any way around it unless okay. unless Mr. Sawyer can. Well, he's going to have to redesign somehow. Then but. I call for the question. Discussion. Well, we can't call for the question yet because there hasn't been no discussion, discussion yet. There. So, Mr. Willingham. Okay. So, in the name of saving money, we are pouring down the drain the money that we've already paid for design fees, and according to the cons on option five, we're pouring another 600000 in refunding money to TDA. No. No, 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 no. no. Well, that's what it said. I, I, that's, what I'm, that's what I've said. I, 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 <laughs> that, I guess I picked option five only because I feel like it, it, I should have just said I recommend that we build classrooms as a primary focus. Okay. All, you know, so, in, in order to make it work, we have to have the support of the Sturgeon City Board and we have to have the support of TDA, and the only way to make the support of TDA is, you know, is to make it to where it still meets their needs. I don't want to pay. I mean, I made that comment earlier. I do not want to pay. Well, do we want to? You back. wouldn't. No other option you, meets. I mean, I mean, we're discussing now. Take that off for now. Wouldn't you consider? I know it's probably uh, not an option, maybe, but why couldn't we just stay where we were, well, not to exceed the funding that's been approved? 
wouldn't that be the same thing of where you're at? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're going to have to make adjustments anyways, but maybe not throw away the baby with the... I don't want to throw the baby. I don't want to throw the baby away, but, I, you know, I, I definitely don't think that we need to be looking at it for classroom space uh, as the primary focus, $4 million at $400 a square foot or whatever the number is. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't... Yeah, we're, I'm not suggesting any more money. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not even suggesting that that that's. So you're, you're, you're I, I don't think that's. I don't think that's in the taxpayer's best interest for us to be building classroom space at four hundred dollars a square foot. I see. Hmm. When I know that the county schools are getting built for somewhere around one hundred and seventy-five to two hundred dollars a square foot. I hate to be pick a unit, but we're not building just classroom space in terms of what Mr. Herring said, Dr. Herring, and what I've been advocating is that we're building an education center. I said the devil's in the details. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I but that, I'd, I'd like to live within the original budget, not to say well, it couldn't, couldn't be less, well, but well, one I mean, piece that we're missing, though, is that this building was part of a, it encompassed part of a strategic plan for Sturgeon City as an effort to have phases that eventually would be a master plan. And as part of that master plan, that's sort of where the TDA comes into play, and that's how you're going to bring people to Sturgeon City. But how much? How would much that be the same as if it was just raw classrooms? I don't know. That, and I well, think that's I'm, what... You know, if I, I guess when I envision raw classrooms, I envision hard, hard walls like right. you could see. And Not I don't removable. think hard walls meets the needs of the TDA. Not or, unless you can quantify it to say somehow. we've got classes coming from but, other areas. Go ahead, Eddie. I know you had some more. You still, you still had some more. I, I was okay. responding to the and, one. And so we're saving money. Well, the, the design pieces are lost. Um, Whatever you, I, I accept whatever you all represent on the six hundred thousand uh, dollars. But <laughs> we're putting Sturgeon City in a position of making less money by taking the event option. Yes. yes. And surely they would have made something. Um, they might have lost something though, which is part of my argument. But well, they could lose. They could experience a shortfall even with this setup. Yeah, they could. So. You know, apples to apples. I mean, that's why we um, have discussion of the motion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, you, their contribution you're gonna, could be negotiated. I guess if we don't build everything that they were counting on to generate revenue, that could be taken into account. Well, you know, let's just just say you bring let's just say you bring something in for for two million dollars. Yeah. You know, and they signed on originally to pay debt service on four million. I think at that point you have to renegotiate with the, the board, Sturgeon City Board, and and so that they're paying appropriately. Correct. And I think TDA may have to have that same opportunity to where they would get a chance to renegotiate if we bring it in at two million. It just seems like now we're relitigating the initial idea. At the four million, because I hear Mayor Pro Tem saying, "Let's stick with the original plan, and that is to bring it in at the, the four million. That's the original plan, right? That budget, yeah, whatever that budget was. And so, um, that's one thing. But now we're getting um, even on budget. I'm sensing that there would be this opposition, even if it was. You, you are correct. You're correct. I, I would have some, I, just because I just feel that, that, that it's excessive for the, I don't think it's a good deal for the taxpayers. And I guess I've got to object to this option because you, if you back it up a slide and you say you're making a motion for option five, but you disregard the square footage and you disregard the price. I mean, well, that, well, I say you're saying you're making a motion for option five, well, I, I, but you're dis, you say all, disregard the square footage and disregard the money. All, so all that, all that is, all, all I mean, that is. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that it needs to be some sort of a compromise. I don't, I don't see the 1.22 as being a hard set. I think that's strictly uh, was the city manager's. Um, I'm assuming it was your, your idea. Yes. Uh, the city manager's uh, what could be. 
as an as another option. I'm I'm still saying let's build let's build classrooms, and I'm still saying that we need to have support of TDA. I'm still saying we need to have the support of the, of the, of the board. Done. I'm just saying, why do we why do we go ahead and say design up to four million dollars when I know we can do something that makes everybody I hope everybody would be satisfied. They may not be thrilled, but satisfied. At two million or three million, but well, I think if you tell an architect that you have four million dollars to, to spend, he's going to, he's going to design you a four million dollar building, right? I, I think, think so. That's why. I'm isn't the first isn't his fee based on a percentage of the uh, <coughs> well cost of the job? Is that not right? Okay. I have a question for Mrs. Morton. We're we keep talking about four million, uh, and we're basing them um, four hundred and some dollars a square foot based on that. But my understanding was that the arch architect was saying that um, the increase over the budget, I guess I'm looking at the 400 and some thousand, wasn't brick and mortar. He was saying there were other things that caused that increase, enough delay and <coughs> right. I mean, the I mean, landscaping. Uh, and yeah. somehow, you're not comparing apples with apples if you redesign it and you've benefited from that, even in the new design. I would, I, would, I would agree that perhaps the landscaping on this might be more involved than you would perhaps put in a, in a school. I, I agree with you. That may not be apples to apples there. Right. And I do know part of the cost overrun is because of cost increases in material and la and labor. Labor labor has jumped up in the last four or five years in Onslow County for construction workers. So I know that's part of it. I, I don't disagree. So even if we had accepted option five years ago, we would still probably be looking at if 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 we hadn't over had budget. If we hadn't had an environmental issue, we might have, might have been over over budget four years ago or three years, whenever the design was finished. But we, you know, I, no question, the delay has contributed to some of the issues. And had had there not been the delay, we wouldn't even be here today because it would be probably built and open. But we're using that as an objection to that option one. That I, I, would have been there if it were option five. You are correct in, in that I feel like we, we as a council have been given another opportunity to look at this. Um, okay. I, I don't, I, I, I agree with you when, when you said I'm relitigating. I guess we really are. <laughs> and, 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 but I'm taking advantage of the opportunity. <laughs> so, I, just, I know we're still under discussion. The only thing I'd like to say is while I agree with a lot of the stuff that's been said today, I, you know, one thing that I want to keep in mind is that we did make a commitment. I mean, we made a commitment. We sat around the room. We made a commitment. We heard the same deliberations, and we committed. The only thing that's changed is we've had some environmental issues that have taken some time. It's coming in over budget. But at the end of the day, we made a commitment, and now we're sort of taking back that commitment. I'm not. You know, or I'm not saying we're taking back. That's not the right word. But we're, we're having a discussion and potentially having different feelings about some of the issues. You know. Well, we, we, all, I we, we all change over a period of time. And, but, and but the thing is, is that that board has continued to march on. TDA has continued to march on. The city has paid their debt. Everybody has sort of met their obligations and I think it's um, you know I think it's only appropriate that, that we at least give them the opportunity to get this within budget agreed you I know, think holding and, the architect's feet to the fire and then asking the architect to do what he needs to do with what he's already been paid for to get it where it needs to be well I agree with everything you said labor has gone up and you know some stuff has gone up but it hasn't doubled and I still believe that you can build it for a reasonable price at what they're looking to do. I mean, that's just my opinion. You know, it's still a substantial amount of money, and it's still a reasonable-sized building. 12,000 square feet is not a Taj Mahal by any stretch of the imagination. So, you know, I just feel like to take that carpet from under the program is, is I don't know. You know, well, I, I know that we've that we've taken the, the carpet underneath from out from underneath them. Uh, the the money is still there. Yeah. 
It's just well, I think emotion it, sort of says what I'm saying. It, it does. I, you know, we may disagree. Way, I know. I, I think way. I think you're willing to spend. I'm hearing you say that you're willing to spend up to the the maximum amount of dollars that are left for the for the building, for whatever the that, whatever that number is. Yeah. And I and I'm saying. Okay, if that's what it comes out to be, and okay, we did make that commitment four years ago, but I'm saying I think it's an opportunity for the board and the architect to go back and re-examine their design and say, hey, can we bring it in for, um, you know, three, three, pop, three million or, or three million? Or well, I support, two, I support that as I, long as know, we're leaving it at that to give them I, the I opportunity. Did a, I did not put a cap on that. I, I, I. Um, you know, I may may lose some support from uh, Mr. Thomas here if we do that, but uh, well, Randy, I think makes a lot of good points. He, he does, I mean, and I, I'm not dis. I mean, I, I, I think we all we all make architect it. to do whatever you want him to do, but does that mean it's going to be reality when the day comes when the when the pedal hits the metal? I don't know. You know, that's a you question could, that you know, they have to work out. There you go. You know, we're one still of the things, in the same position. And I think it's important to say as well, since we're having conversation, one may say, well, what's 400000 Well, what's <laughs> 500000 Well, you know, the city still has a lot of mountains to, 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 to climb. I mean, we've got streets that continue I to decay. Say, I'd love to see savings to where we yeah. could put money to streets. We have, we've got we've a got lot a of problem. capital projects for our citizens that we need to have discussions about. So it's not just three hundred thousand or four hundred thousand or why can't you do this or why can't you do that? Yeah, I know. So you know, yeah, there was a lot of there was there was some talk about using some of that money that had had, had been retired on debt in the uh, yeah, projects fund, but you know. We got too much stuff. We that, got a lot of stuff, and we continue to lose money. Around the corner from, from yeah. us, you know, so we can't tap it. We're not. That. We're not growing. We're not generating <laughs> right. the additional income each year that we that we used to do when, yeah. when we were, uh, when the economy was booming, and when we had uh, options for involuntary annexation. Although we never, to my knowledge, we've not done much through the years. I don't think, but. But we're not able well, we, to grow. We have, well, we have, uh, okay, you're, well, if you're talking about the base, yeah, maybe the base was involuntary. You're right. I mean, going back to the original plan, there of the four million dollars. I mean, or like like you said, whatever's left of it, that should be the cap. Period. Right. The city shouldn't be any more responsible for any more money, or TDA shouldn't be responsible for any money over that. Well, we don't so have. Des design within those parameters. And you still got the you know, the issue that if if they do decide to, well, you know if if for whatever reasons uh, that that it doesn't do well as a as an event center, as a secondary use, uh, then you know we still got that discussion as to who who's who's on the hook. Just don't give an opinion. I won't give an opinion. Just gonna make an observation. <laughs> what you just described is option two. Now you have to decide. Are you? What you said is we're gonna let them redesign within the budget. That's option two. Can Maybe we see it. Back to option yeah. Two? Show us option two up there. Option two is a smaller building. They've already told you that. If this is the budget, this is what they can build. What I'm saying to you is, is this what you mean? Is this what you mean? Because I think from again, the discussions from the board is that there's no desire. If, if, if building a building of 7,500 square feet is their only option, I think that they wouldn't move forward with that kind of expenditure. From what we understand, the mayor, you may can clarify that from the board, but uh, that's what we were told. I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Who's it's told right. what? From discussions, on, and the board is here; they can come up and speak for themselves. From what, from what we understand, is that <clears throat> a six thousand square foot building, a seven thousand square foot building, wouldn't do what they needed to do. So therefore, it wouldn't. Be beneficial to make that kind of commitment because it's not big enough. You know? Well, how are we going to? I thought we already resolved the fact that we can't build a building of the size they wanted with the funds we have available. And this 
is saying we'll build as much of a building as we can with with that budget. Well, I think that's, that's how just, I look at that. That's just well, option two. But my, my, yeah, it's ahead. better than option three. I, I just want to make right. sure, in, and I'm not giving opinions, I'm just trying to clarify. You need to not only tell them how much money you're going to give them to spend, but what you want that money spent on. And what I'm saying is all the discussion around the room, not all, but some of it has been about classrooms. This is not classroom. <coughs> this is classrooms plus meeting space. So in whatever motion you make, what I hope you will do is clarify money and design. The last thing I'll also suggest is this. If you're interested in classrooms, what we can do through some very good just conceptual plans that are backed up by opinions of probable cost without getting into a lot of detail is we can show you what you can build for $1 million, for $2 million, for $3 million, for $4 million. And then you can decide from that, and they can decide, they meaning the Surgeon City Board can decide from that, which of those options fits what you intended to fund and what they intended to fund. One clarification. My memory is that, start, that the bond issue is paid $150,000 a year by TDA money, not seventy-five. dollars Is my memory wrong? No, we're $150,000. One, okay. But In we a previous also, comment, it was one. It was but we also give Sturgeon City funding through TDA. That's separate. Yeah. Yeah, you give out of the, out of the two-thirds <coughs> money, you're currently right. giving them ninety, ninety-five thousand dollars a year. The one fifty is a separate amount. And that comes out of the one-third. One That's yes. one-third, no, yes, sir. Sent. And, and Richard, just to clarify what you're saying is, can they not build classrooms that are convertible still to give them the opportunity to have a educational event that they need, you know, yeah. to open up some classrooms with? Can that be? I mean, it's an education and an environment. I mean, center, that's what you're saying, environmental right? Environmental center, so it doesn't have to be strictly classrooms. I wouldn't think you would have. Rooms, because I think rooms. if you do the hard walls, then they would be limited to just yeah. classrooms. But again, I think the, I, I wouldn't, whatever you do, as far as other options, I would not get too specific on design. And here's one of the reasons why. You may find that there's a $1 million design that fits the educational needs that you're absolutely in love with, but it doesn't have the classroom walls. Well, that's what but I was getting at, at with, my, way. with my comments was to stay within the budget of what we had already allocated. Would that not work? Well, that's all, all I'm saying is the staff, you know, the, whatever y'all vote tonight, that's exactly what we're going to implement. Well, we have to have enough direction from y'all to know what it is we and, and maybe even new architects. I mean, one of the things I will, I will say to you, John Sawyer is a very good architect. We've had great results from him. Sometimes, though, in life, including management life, you come to an impasse on something and you need to start over with new ideas. Because, you know, if, if you pardon the expression, you can talk to me all day long about who should be the number one team in the nation. I hate to tell you, my <laughs> mind's made up. And it doesn't wear red and white. Okay. I think the the flexibility that you need to give us from whatever option, unless you're going to go with option one, or unless you're going to go with option two, is that we're given the freedom to completely start over with new architectural thought that could come from John Sawyer, it could come from someone else. Because when, when I have, and we're all guilty of this, when I have focused on a project, it's hard for me to suddenly think outside the box a different way. Now, sure, you're kissing $400,000 away. But at the same time, meaning the architectural fees you put in. Yeah. But at the same time, if you want to start the project over, which is basically what you're saying you're doing, by concentrating on classrooms and not meeting space, then I don't know that it's not better to start over with some new architects likewise who give you fresh ideas maybe what we do is we even have a competition where we have some architects come in and we pay them a nominal fee and i'm talking about very nominal fee to come up with some concepts for y'all and the sturgeon city board to look at 
Mr. Willingham has a comment to make. Throughout the evening, Mayor Pro Tem and uh, Mr. Warden have expressed that they're sharing the same thought, but it seems different to me. So what I'm interpreting is make the project come within $4 million. When Mr. Lazar says stick with the original, that can be done um, by subtraction. Mr. Warden has already talked about a standard sort of building that he's familiar with at $175 a square foot. To 200 yeah. To 200 um, <clears throat> When I say subtract, subtraction, if the architect changes things, takes things away, uses less expensive things, it might not be the dream in appearance, but it can come to within the four million. Why not go with one and limit the money to four million? Then you have your option for the um, multi-use space and the classrooms. And we where we kind of started. If, if the board, had, if the Sturgeon City Board had, had stuck with that amount of money, would we even be having this discussion tonight? I'm not sure. If they, if they had come back in with the design that met the budget, would we had any further say on on a go no go? Yes, sir. It was, okay. Yeah, come okay. Back well, in. well, they've, but they've had, they've I had multiple opportunities to bring it in the budget. When they got rid of that overhead door, I mean the overhead partition, the architect said, "I can lower the building." Why didn't he? They, why didn't he help the board come better prepared with how much would they actually then been saving from that? Maybe they thought that they could get the increase, but now that they can't, well, I mean, I think it's an opportunity for us to say, that's it, design a building within this framework. And I think that that comes close to satisfying the initial intention and us. I got a question. I think we're seeing the same thing. <laughs> Looking up there at option number that's two, wild. we still have furniture funding and operational costs. Where, where's that coming from? Funding the furniture is they've 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 said several times that they have that and that's actually in their right. I think that's form. in that letter you wrote, right? Okay. So yeah, they have to have that. The operational cost, they're they're saying they're hoping to generate enough revenues from their programs as well as their events to pay the operational costs. That's that's the hope. All right. If there's no other comments, there is a motion and a second. I'm gonna withdraw my second. Withdraw your second. Mr. Warren, do you want to re revise your motion? No. Or? All right, then we'll look for a second. Go ahead and make your motion. Well, I want to hear the motion from Mayor Principal Lazar because I want to be on. I well, my mo my motion is 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 to support <coughs> the original approved uh, concept. Concept and and that there's no additional funding available. And that we would ask that the Sturgeon City Board go back and redesign, design, modify, redesign, design. modify uh, a, the building to meet the budgeted amount. And I would also add that it's a good opportunity for them to relook at at their uh, operating uh, uh, prospectus and make sure that they can support that and that they can still move forward with the things that they've heard from this board tonight and that if they can't that they on their own make a different decision second all right i have a motion and second is there some additional discussion on this motion question I, well i'm just going to make a comment i don't understand why anybody that's familiar with this council with this current budget operating constraints that we have, why why you would come asking for additional money? But that was just a comment. 
But this motion does not do that. No, it does not. Okay. It does not. No. Question? No. No, call the question. Well, I've got to give everybody an opportunity yeah. to speak. Well, discuss. I think everybody spoke. I'm speaking for him. <laughs> <laughs> and I thank you. <laughs> all right, with that said, do you have a motion and a second? And as, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, it's, let me count. One, two, three, four. All right, four. 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 So four. who's four? Four. You want to record that? Okay. And two, two opposed. Okay. okay. The staff tomorrow will make a call to the architect. Uh, I want it made very clear that this is not a Sturgeon City project. This is a City of Jacksonville project. The city manager's office will make a call tomorrow to, the, to John Sawyer. John Sawyer will be given a direction, and that is to take the existing building and determine how it can be built within the existing money. Thank you. Have you had any discussions with the Sturgeon City uh, Executive Board on this? None that I would care, I would care to share. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn. Yeah. I'll even I'll even vote in favor of that one tonight. <laughs> <laughs>